Good morning, Eclect Beastas. Um, I'm coming to y'all this morning, and I'm going to try to keep this short, sweet, and simple, okay? However, uh, I just felt the need to just unpack, unpack last night's ugly truth with the Mary Jane situation with depression and suicide. And depression and suicide is very, very real. I've been reading some of the comments from yesterday's vlog and I was reading all the comments that I had posted from a post that I posted on Facebook last night and it just has me compelled to, if it's going to help somebody else, share. God told me to use my gifts and my experiences to help others and this is one of them and as i had said to you guys before i'm someone who has suffered from depression yep i'm here before y'all today naked no glam this is just me this is stephanie and this is stephanie in the raw okay what better way to talk about depression than just being in the raw so the very first time i experienced depression was back in 2003 my husband had got orders to go to Fort Drum, New York, and he refused to take us with him just due to the fact that he knew that as soon as he got there, he knew that he would deploy. And he said to, he said to me when he came home, he wanted his wife to be here when he got back because a lot of marriages break up when soldiers deploy. He told me that me and the girls was going to stay in North Carolina and you know we were going to make it through this and like I said for four years four years he was stationed in Fort Drum and out of those four years 26 months he was deployed in Afghanistan two separate tours the first one was nine months the second one was 18 months whatever yeah that's 26 I ain't, I ain't trying to think right now when it comes to math but Every single person in our family, me, Jasmine, Jada, and James, we all went through a very dark point in our lives during that time. And you never know how your life is gonna be affected by one family member not being there. I was the first one to go through it. And when I tell y'all, I paid attention to the signs and the signs they were experiences that I've never experienced ever in my life. And I was having really bad headaches. I was having bad neck pains. Then the pain would shoot from my neck to it started coming to my chest. It was my back. My entire back was like knots. And I went to the doctor one day because I just, I couldn't bear all of this pain anymore. And she asked me, a couple of questions and she gave me a questionnaire and she left me in the room with my thoughts and I completed it well when she came back she had told me she said Stephanie you're suffering from depression and she said the good thing about it is is that you're paying attention to your body and your body is not cooperating with you or it's not functioning in its normal state so that was the first identifier and she told me that, you know, she knows a lot of people don't like to get on medication and stuff like this. She said, but based on my situation, she said that she would not put pressure on me to take the meds. However, she was going to write me the prescription and they were there for me if I ever needed them. I endured it for about another three or four days and then I went and filled that prescription. And I was on those meds I want to say for like nine months nine months however I started to feel better like within like maybe six to eight weeks I started to feel like myself again and there is no magic pill so don't get that part twisted whatsoever but there are medications that can take the edge off of what you're going through where you feel like you're at the edge and you're about to jump the cliff not necessarily meaning suicide, but you're just about to lose it. And so 
I took the prescription and I took it for nine months and I would meet with her like every other month and we would, you know, talk about how I was feeling and stuff. And that was, I guess, her way of being a therapist for me. The second time that I had to go see a therapist and like I said, I just pay attention to the signs and your body will tell you, your body tells you everything. And that's the key point. Don't ignore that. Don't. And the second time I experienced it, it was because of a job. It was because of my job. I worked at Cracker Barrel at the time. And when I say I worked in a hostile work environment, very hostile work environment. And it was a work environment where the people just didn't want to work with you. They wanted to fight you on everything. And I'm not no punk. I'm not a punk and I'm not someone who gives in and throws in the towel. However, everybody has their breaking point. And it just came to a point where I had a breaking point. This was the most challenging job, the most challenging position in my management career that I had ever dealt with. And that was the four years that I worked at Cracker Barrel in Atlanta, Georgia. I ain't gonna tell y'all the location. I'm gonna just say this, the, the staff there, the people who work for you are the people who can make life a living hell for you or a beautiful heaven. And I was going through this transition period where I was, I never was the type of boss that was afraid to let people go. Um, I don't manage with my heart. I'm somebody that managed by black and white. And if this is what it says, this is what we're going to do. And wrong is wrong. And, you know, I've just always been someone who has a high degree of integrity. And I believe that when shit ain't going right or shit don't seem right you know you report it you report it and you find out if you, if what you're feeling if it's accurate well shit had leaked out about an investigation that um was going on and when i tell y'all it was like a fucking mutiny it really was and it had just got to me three weeks of dealing with that shit it had finally just got to me and I had went to see my primary care physician and she broke it down to me like this, okay? She said, Stephanie, you have a choice. Do you want to live or do you want to die? And I'm like, of course I want to live. She said, well, leave that job and go find you another. Because she was like, if that much stress to where my i had headaches i had pains in my neck i had pains in my chest i had back problems this time it started affecting my digestive system i couldn't sleep i had extreme insomnia i couldn't sleep and then it would come morning time and then i'm walking around like a zombie because my body is like starting to shut down on me due to stress and I was starting to fall into a depression because that was the first time that my body actually started like saying, I'm going to slow your ass down whether you want to or not. And I just, I remember telling my husband, I'm going to take time for me. And yes, I did. I called them. My doctor took me out of work for three weeks and within them three weeks, I had went on vacation. Um, I came, I was able to relax. And when I say I cut off all communication from my job at that time, I didn't give a damn who was calling. I didn't care if it was about my paycheck. I didn't care what it was about. I just needed some time for me and get my thoughts together. And me and my husband to this day, we said that was the best vacation that we have experienced with each other that summer. And we went to the Dominican Republic, and that was the same time I conquered a lot of fears with the ocean, the water, you know, zip lining through a jungle and stuff like that. And I just started taking back my life and taking back control, and I was free. So ask me, did I go back to that job? I went back because I told you I'm not a quitter, 
and I'm not a loser. And I had to be the one to change my own mindset and say, I'm not going to let these motherfuckers get the best of me. I will leave on my own terms and you're not going to run me out the door. And long story short, that's exactly how it all played out. I left when I wanted to leave and I got a better team. And even the person that I was having like all this difficult difficulties with, even me and her were even able to come to a, a cohesive point where we could have an amicable relationship, okay? The third time I experienced it was when Jasmine was getting ready to go off to college and I was experiencing separation anxiety. And that was the first time in my life where my husband, we had moved and I didn't have a job. I didn't have a job because there was no place for me to go work with Cracker Barrel where we were moving. And I had to resign due to, the, you know, my husband's military PCS, which is all fine. But that was the first time I did not have a job and I really did not know how to act or feel. And my daughter was leaving to go to college for the first time. She was going to be three hours away. And I just was not dealing with that very well. Well, I met a therapist in Valdosta, Georgia, and she will forever, ever, ever, ever be a, a friend to me. And she occasionally, she calls me now to this day and she checks on me to make sure I'm okay and she keeps up with me on social media. And she helped me get through a lot. She helped me, I want to say, unpack probably things that I didn't even know that was like within me that was bothering me. I was going through a tough time with dealing with my DNA and it just all hit me at once. I had started my business, Eclect Nista, and you know, it's growing pains when you start in a business, but I persevered. I was going through some things with some friendships and it was just, you know, time for me to let a lot of things go and I couldn't hold on to them anymore because internally it could be something that was killing me and I didn't even know it. So when I tell you guys to pay attention to your bodies and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to say I am in a low place. Don't be afraid. Open your mouth and get some help. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's nothing to feel ashamed about. God put other people here on this earth to do those type of jobs, to be that person that can be biased and that can listen to you. And the person that can tell you, you know what, what you worrying about really ain't shit. So why are you fucking worrying about it? Sometimes we need people that can snatch us back Sometimes we just need someone that we feel like are not going to judge us. And we just need that person to just listen. Sometimes it's all we need is someone to listen. Therefore, we can unpack that weight from us and give it to the universe and leave it there. And don't look back. With depression, if you don't get a hold of it, that can lead to suicide. And I would never, ever want anyone to kill themselves. Because guess what? You kill yourself in this world, you're going to hell. I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm trying to see my grandmother one day again. My grandmother, my grandfather, people who have died and left us behind. I want to see them all again one day. Because I know those people did go to heaven. So don't be afraid. If you have people that you talk to and they're constantly not wanting to hear it or don't want to talk to you about it or they just think you are slamming doors in their face, go seek some professional help. It's never too late. It's never too late. Love yourself enough to take care of yourself. It has nothing else to do with anybody else. It's all you. God wants us to love us first. And he, well, God wants us to love him and love us, love who we are, love the person that he created. Snatch your life back. Snatch your life back and get the help you need. I love y'all and I hope me sharing my experiences helps someone else. Talk to y'all later.